Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to Organic Chemistry Paper 3 in this session we are going to talk about unit 3 heterocyclic compound in lecture 1 we are going to talk about classification and the characteristics of heterocyclic compounds i am dr balaji currently working as associate professor in the school of biotechnology at jawaharlal nehru university this project is sponsored by dth swayam prabha mhrd new delhi the topics that will be covered in this session include classification of heterocycles so how heterocycle can be classified that we are going to see we are also going to see the comparison between carbocyclic and heterocyclic systems. We will also be looking at the characteristics of heterocyclic compounds. That means comparison of physical properties of various compounds, boiling point, melting point, dipole moment, etc. We will be looking at. We will also look at the effect of bond length hybridization resonance on structures and the properties of these compounds. And we will also study about pi excessive and pi deficient nature of heterocycles. So all these things we will study in this particular session. Welcome to the next session. In this session we will be looking at heterocycles. Mainly we will talk about nomenclature and characteristics of heterocyclic compounds. Before we get into heterocyclic chemistry, let us look at the broad classification of organic chemistry. The organic chemistry is basically classified into three major categories. The first one is aliphatic uh, compounds, the second one is aromatic compound and the third and the most important one is the heterocyclic compounds. Aliphatic chemistry is uh, further divided into open chain and uh, carbocyclic framework. Aromatic chemistry is further divided into monocyclic and uh, polycyclic compounds. In the previous session we have studied about uh, polyaromatic carbons like uh, naphthalene, anthracene, phenanthrene, all those things we studied. So that belong to aromatic chemistry of polycyclic uh, compounds. And now we are going to study about uh, heterocyclic compounds. Uh, here we have two major classifications. One is the monocyclic compounds and the polycyclic uh, uh, compounds. That means uh, we talk about uh, single uh, ring and multiple rings. So what are heterocycles? When we look at heterocycles, these are basically cyclic systems containing one or more heteroatoms. The heteroatoms mainly we deal or we talk about is nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur. Of course, other metals are also known, but we will mainly focus about nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur heterocycles in this particular session and uh, the coming few more sessions. We are not including uh, metals like uh, lithium, magnesium uh, or uh, silicon, uh, selenium etc. are known. Even phosphorus heterocycles are also known. But we are not going to study about those things. We mainly will focus on nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur heterocycles. These compounds will have uh, different physical and uh, chemical properties than their all carbon ring analogs. And some of the examples of uh, these heterocycle compounds are present in nucleic acids, pigments, vitamins, antibiotics, drugs, pesticides, dyes, plastics, etc., etc. So here we have some of the examples of various heterocyclic compounds. Uh, the first one is called uh, pyrrole. This is a five-membered heterocycle compound containing one heteroatom that is nitrogen. We have furon which is having oxygen as the heteroatom. Uh, we have thiophene which has sulfur as the heteroatom. So these are all the three five-membered ring compounds we will be studying in this session and in the couple of uh, next few sessions also. Here is a six-membered heterocycle containing one heteroatom. That means nitrogen is the one heteroatom and this compound is called pyridine. We also have more than one heteroatom like uh, we have two nitrogens here. This type of compound is called 1,4 diazine. That means if we start the numbering, as you are familiar with the numbering, so the number will start with uh, one of the heteroatom here 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this compound is called 1,4 diazine. That means two nitrogens are present and if it is uh, 
one three die substitution that is called one three diazine or the common name what we give is pyrimidines. So, these are uh, different types of heterocycles and uh, instead of uh, same heteroatom we can also have different heteroatoms. So, in this particular case we have uh, 1, 2 and 3. The numbering actually starts from oxygen as one number 1 and this is number 2 and this is number 3. So, the numbering will be 1, 2, 3 and this is 1, 3 oxalane and the common name for this compound is oxazole and we also have 134 oxadiazole. So, these are some of the compounds. Here again uh, the numbering will start from 1 oxygen and 2, 3 and 4. So, this is how we will actually number and in the nomenclature we will study how the compounds are being numbered uh, elaborately in the later part of this session. So, why heterocyclic chemistry is very important? We are going to see a lots of important compounds which are actually heterocyclic compounds. So, the first and the foremost thing is our uh, DNA and RNA. Uh, in our body, the DNA and the RNA contains various bases, purines and pyrimidines are the bases. Some of the examples of purine is adenine and guanine, pyrimidines are cytosine and uh, uracil and the thymine. So, these are uh, some of the compounds by which uh, the DNA and the RNA uh, com DNA and the RNA are made. So, these compounds are basically heterocyclic compounds based on which these uh, biologically important compounds are made. And the next one is another uh, important class of compound which is vitamins. Uh, riboflavin, pyridoxine, folic acid, biotin, etc. all have a heterocyclic ring. So, that is the reason uh, we will be looking at heterocyclic compounds in a much more detailed way. And when we talk about hormones, kinetin, serotonin, histamine all contain heterocyclic ring. And if we talk about amino acids, there are various amino acids that are having heterocyclic ring. For example, proline, histidine, tryptophan, etc. are having heterocyclic ring. And colored and the pigments when we talk about we have both animal and plant origin. In the case of plant we have chlorophyll which is a colored material that is having heterocyclic ring. And when we talk about uh, human beings and other animal we have hemoglobin that is also having a heterocyclic ring. Then of course, uh, pesticides and insecticides which are weed killers like I mean to preserve the plants we also apply various uh, weed killers and they also have heterocyclic compounds. And if we talk about the drugs, various drugs what which are being used to treat various diseases especially the pharmaceutical compounds if we look at the major class of heterocyclic compounds are actually belonging to the pharmaceuticals. Say for example, we have alkaloids, morphine and recipine are some of the examples. We have anti-cancer compounds like taxol and camptothecin. We have analgesics like uh, despiramine and we have various antibiotics, penicillin, etc. So, these are all the different types of compounds which are very essential for our survival and our benefit. So, they all belong to heterocyclic chemistry. In other words, all these compounds are heterocyclic compounds. Let us look at the classification of uh, heterocyclic compounds. The heterocyclic compounds can be classified into various uh, types and uh, let us look at uh, what are the different types. The first one is based on the nature of bonding. So, we can talk about the saturated or unsaturated heterocyclic compound. So, this is a saturated ring. If you look at here, this is the saturated ring and we have a double bond here. So, this is an unsaturated ring. So, this is one way of classifying heterocyclic compounds. They belong to saturated or unsaturated bonding. And we can also use a different uh, nature that is like whether it is a alicyclic or aliphatic uh, type compounds or aromatic compounds. Say for example, here this entire ring is a alicyclic ring. So, this is one type of classification. The heterocycles can be classified. So, this is compound is called a pipiridine and this is pyridine. So, this is a aromatic ring and this is a alicyclic ring. 
So, we can also classify heterocyclic compounds into two different categories. One is alicyclic compounds or aromatic compounds. Then we can also classify them according to the number of heteroatoms present. So, in this particular case, we have one heteroatom present in the ring. Here we have two heteroatoms present in the ring. So, depending on the number of heteroatoms, we can also classify them as one, two or more heteroatoms in the rings. And we can also classify them according to the number of rings also. Here we classified according to number of heteroatoms that means within one ring how many heteroatoms are present that we have classified. We can also classify them according to the number of rings present say for example in this particular compound we have only one ring here we have two rings. So, we can also classify them as a monocyclic, bicyclic or polycyclic ring compounds. Then we can also connect them based on the ring connectivity, we can also classify them like uh, this is a monocyclic ring. So, there is no connection in this particular ring. Here we have a fused ring for example, this uh, there are two rings number 1 and 2. We have two rings these are connected or fused together and we also have a bridged one. So, this is uh, formed by the Diels-Alder reaction. So, this is another example of a heterocycle where we have a bridged ring system and here we have the spirocyclic ring system. So, the spirocyclic ring system has actually one carbon which is common for both the rings. So, this is what is called a spirocyclic arrangement. So, here is the heterocycle the heteroatom present in this one. So, we can also be uh, classify the heterocyclic compounds based on the ring connectivity and we can also classify them according to the ring size. So, here we have a three membered ring another four membered ring here we have a five membered ring. So, like that three, four, five, six, seven, eight like that uh, the heterocyclic compounds can also be classified according to the ring size. So, these are all the various types of classifications by which heterocyclic compounds can be classified. So, the first one is based on the nature of bonding, another type is based on the nature of the system whether it is a cyclic compound or an aromatic one, then based on the number of heteroatoms and then based on the number of rings and then based on uh, the ring connectivity and the ring size. So, these are all the various ways by which uh, heterocyclic compounds can be classified. And let us look at some of the important heterocycles. We talked about heterocyclic compounds are important drugs. So, here uh, there are uh, examples uh, given here uh, camptothecin, reserpin, strychnin, uh, sednafil that is Viagra, epibatidine, quinine. So, these are different compounds which are having the heterocyclic ring say for example, we have a pyridine ring uh, this is basically the quinoline structure. We will study about quinoline and other things in the later part. So, here uh, just briefly let us look at there is a benzene ring and there is also the next uh, pyridine like uh, heterocyclic ring. So, these two are combined uh, fused together this type of arrangement is called uh, quinoline. And uh, here we have the nitrogen uh, heterocycle. So, this is uh, if we simply look at uh, this particular ring system, this is nothing but the pyrrolidine type ring system and here this is a lactone ring and if you look at uh, this kind of compound. So, this is uh, an indole uh, type of compound like uh, this entire system is called the indole unit. And uh, if we look at uh, other ring systems also, we have this again is the indole ring system. So, we have uh, various or uh, different types of heterocyclic uh, systems present in various drugs. And we also have uh, important vitamins, uh, vitamin B contains various heterocyclic ring systems. So, here the folic acid has uh, this particular uh, entire unit is actually the heterocyclic unit. Uh, we can also include this uh, amino group together. And uh, we have uh, two heterocyclic ring present in biotin, uh, one is uh, nitrogen containing ring, another one is uh, sulfur containing ring. And we also have uh, riboflavin containing various uh, heterocycles, pyridoxine contains uh, pyridine unit, 
niacin contains the again a pyridine unit so these are all the various uh, heterocycles that are present in vitamin b thiamine also has a nitrogen and a sulfur heterocycle here and the here it is the dinitrogen heterocycle so there are various compounds uh, which are uh, very important for our survival belongs to heterocycles let us look at the comparison between carbocyclic system and the heterocyclic systems uh, in the beginning we saw there are three major class of classification of organic compounds or organic chemistry one is the aliphatic chemistry the second one is the aromatic chemistry the third one is the heterocyclic chemistry so we are going to compare the first and three here that means carbocyclic systems and the heterocyclic systems because carbocyclic systems when we say that has both uh, aliphatic compounds and aromatic compounds as well so these are basically carbon and hydrogen compounds only because there is no other heteroatom present either on the system that is the ring system or maybe as a functional group so that's why we call this as a carbocyclic system and in the heterocyclic system we have at least one heteroatom that means either oxygen sulfur nitrogen may be present in the ring system so that is the major difference between carbocyclic and the heterocyclic system and in the case of uh, carbocyclic system and uh, heterocyclic system aromaticity is a important thing that means uh, many compound belongs to aromatic uh, characters or nature so this is an important concept for both uh, carbocyclic system and heterocyclic system here the major difference or the reactivity or the importance of heterocyclic system come from the lone pair of electrons when we talk about carbocyclic systems actually the carbocyclic systems does not have a carbon with the lone pair of electron whereas when we talk about heteroatoms whether it is oxygen nitrogen or sulfur they have at least one lone pair of electron so that plays a vital role in various reactivity of heterocyclic systems and also changes the electronic nature of the compound so this is one of the major difference between carbocyclic system and heterocyclic systems and of course uh, we know about whenever we talk about ring rings will have strain and this strain plays a vital role in the case of reactivity for the carbocyclic systems whereas in the case of uh, heterocyclic compounds they are also cyclic compounds so the ring strain also may play a vital role along with that steric and the electronic effect also play a very important role in the reactivity because the electronic effect comes from the lone pair that is present in the heteroatom and the steric effect also plays a vital role because there may be some functional groups which are present in the cyclic system and uh, if you look at the number of compounds actually uh, carbon uh, that is carbocyclic compounds uh, numbers are much less whereas heterocyclic compounds what we have is millions of uh, millions of compounds are actually known which belongs to heterocyclic systems and if you look at the isomerism part uh, carbocyclic compounds show positional and geometric isomerism and also conformational isomerism so like uh, this ring flip is basically the conformational isomerism we will be talking about and in the case of carbocyclic systems so this is very important in the case of carbocyclic systems and when we talk about heterocyclic systems all the three type of uh, isomerism that is present in carbocyclic uh, system is also present here along with that we also have functional isomerism that means whether the heteroatom is present within the ring or whether it is present outside the ring when we talk about uh, carbocyclic systems the major use of uh, carbocyclic compounds are they are used as a solvents fuels or opto electronic materials whereas heterocyclic compounds have wide variety of applications they may be used as reagents say for example uh, chiral catalyst and ligands are uh, made using heterocyclic compounds they are also used as a drug because most of the pharmaceutically important compounds have a heterocyclic ring at least one heterocyclic ring is present and they are also used in photovoltaic material and ionic compounds say for example here the thiophenes uh, various uh, type of uh, thiophene compounds are shown here here is a fused system and these kind of compounds are generally used in photovoltaic materials so they have a wide uh, industrial application 
and uh, when we talk about reactivity carbocyclic compounds generally undergo addition reaction if it is a alicyclic system and they undergo substitution reaction in the case of aromatic system of course we also have uh, aliphatic um, uh, substitution reactions known because mainly if we talk about we have addition and the substitution reaction which are main uh, mainly useful for uh, mainly seen in the case of carbocyclic system whereas heterocyclic compound undergo all type of reactions like uh, oxidation reductions uh, radical reactions rearrangement reactions like uh, so many reactions are possible in the case of heterocyclic system and few of them are possible in the case of carbocyclic system as well and when we talk about the carbocyclic system we only have carbon and hydrogen so they have a uniform uh, bond length because most of the systems they have the uniformity in the bond length that means in the cyclic systems they will have a similar bond length whereas uh, in the case of heterocyclic system we have some heteroatom present either oxygen or nitrogen or sulfur in that case uh, the bond length actually varies we will look at uh, more examples on this particular thing in the later part and for the structural elucidation generally IR is not used because uh, it does not have any functional group so IR is uh, not used whereas in the case of heterocyclic system IR is actually very very important for the characterization of a compound. So this is the major difference between carbocyclic and heterocyclic systems. Let us look at some of the characteristics of heterocyclic compounds. Depending on the functional moiety, the saturated heterocyclic compounds and the corresponding acyclic compounds will have similar or different physical properties or chemical properties. So uh, let us take the example of uh, the functional group that is a primary amine and a secondary amine. We have two compounds. So this compound is an open chain system which is a primary amine. We have a cyclic system. Here we have a secondary amine. So, these compounds are more or less having a very similar structures because they have a very uh, primary and secondary amine is only present. So, they have a very similar structures. But if we talk about uh, between two other systems like um, it is a open chain alcohol and uh, a cyclic ether, they have a very different physical and chemical property because if you look at the boiling point itself the open chain system that is the pentanol is having a boiling point of 138 whereas the cyclic ether is having only the boiling point of 88. So this is mainly due to the alcohol can actually form hydrogen bond whereas this ether cannot form a hydrogen bond. So the presence of hydrogen bond actually increases the boiling point of this particular alcohol. So that is the reason this particular alcohol is having higher boiling point compared to the cyclic system. So when we look at the open chain and the cyclic system, if the functional groups are more or less uh, same like a primary amine and a secondary amine, they may have very similar properties. But if you look at an alcohol and an ether, the functional group itself is quite different. So that is the reason they generally show quite different physical and chemical properties. And when we are looking at uh, the nitrogen and the sulfur heterocycles, generally the nitrogen heterocycle and the sulfur heterocycle have higher boiling point. If you look at uh, the comparison between a carbocyclic one, oxygen, nitrogen and the sulfur heterocyclic, the carbocyclic one is having a boiling point of 40. So this compound is nothing but cyclopentadiene. So this cyclopentadiene has a boiling point of 40. This is furan. So the furan is having a boiling point much lower than the boiling point of the carbocyclic one. And when we look at uh, pyrrole, this is the 5 membered nitrogen heterocycle that is having the highest boiling point followed by thiophene which is having a boiling point of 84. So when we look at the boiling point trend, the trend is oxygen has the least boiling point. This is having the lowest boiling point. 
nitrogen or sulfur uh, is having the highest boiling point and the carbon analog comes in between these two extremes. We can also look at the comparison between the 6 membered ring. So, here we have seen only the 5 membered compounds. Between the 6 membered ring, this is benzene whose boiling point is 80 degree. Whereas, when we look at the nitrogen analog of the 6 membered one, we have a boiling point of 115, which is much higher. So, if you follow the same trend, carbon has a lower boiling point compared to nitrogen heterocycles. And this change may be due to various factors. One is uh, hydrogen bonding, we can talk about when there is, uh, in this particular case, for the case of pyrrole, there is a hydrogen bonding possible. So, that is the reason this is having a very high boiling point. The rest of the compounds do not have the hydrogen bonding ability. So, their boiling points are much less. And uh, it may also be due to a uh, difference in the molecular weight. Of course, the difference is not very huge between the carbocyclic one that is the cyclopentadiene has a molecular weight of 66, whereas the furan has a molecular weight of 68 only. So, molecular weight difference is not very high and when we look at uh, the cyclopentadiene and the pyrrole, the molecular weight difference is just to one unit only. So, even though we can say the molecular weight may have a little bit uh, effect on the boiling point, but it is mainly the hydrogen bonding that is responsible in this particular case. So, let us look at uh, other properties like uh, we can also have a significantly different properties of reactivity between acyclic and heterocyclic compounds. This may arise from the conformational change effects or changes. Say for example, we have a open chain system which is a simple ether compared to a cyclic ether which is epoxide. So, the open chain ether is less reactive because there is no uh, conformational uh, rigidity or uh, effect which is present in this particular system. So, that is why this is less reactive whereas, epoxide is highly constrained system. So, this is a three membered ring having a lot of ring strain. So, that is why this is uh, highly reactive and uh, when we talk about uh, stability, this is uh, much more stable. That means, the open chain one is uh, much more stable compared to the cyclic one. That may also be one of the reason why this is uh, whenever it is more stable, they are uh, less reactive. So, this open chain ether is less reactive compared to the cyclic ether that is epoxide. And we can also say like uh, there is a change in the molecular shape or change in the functional group. Say for example, in this particular case, not a uh, huge change in the functional group. Whereas, when we talk about alcohols and uh, cyclic ethers uh, that we have seen earlier, they have a different boiling point and the reactivity is also quite different. When we talk about uh, nitrogen heterocycles, nitrogen heterocycles are ba uh, basic in nature. So, the basicity of this nitrogen heterocycle may be due to inductive effect or steric effect or solvation effect. These are very important in deciding the basicity of the nitrogen heterocycle. Say for example, if you look at uh, pyrrole that is the aromatic system with uh, pyrrolidine which is the alicyclic system, pyridine which is the aromatic system with the pipiridine which is the alicyclic system. So, when we look at these kind of compounds, the aromatic one are having lower pKa value. In fact, pKa is a measure of acidity, but here we are looking at the basicity. So, the lower the value of uh, pKa means it is going to be low basic. So, that way we can directly relate. So, that means, if the pKa value is higher, it is going to be more basic. So, that way we can easily relate, but in reality the pKa means lower value of pKa means the uh, hydrogen is going to be more acidic in nature. That means, it is going to be less basic in nature. That is uh, similarly, we can compare these two things. So, pyrrole is having pKa of 3.8 means it is low basic or it is uh, much less basic compared to pyrrolidine whose pKa is 11.27. 
Similarly, pyridine is less basic compared to piperidine. So these are all the ways by which we can actually compare the basicity. And what is the reason for this difference is basically the hybridization that means here we have a sp3 carbons which are present here compared to sp2 uh, hybridized carbons here where uh, the aromaticity or the delocalization is a very crucial factor. Whenever there is a resonance or delocalization, the lone pair of electron on this nitrogen is actually involved in the 6 pi electron or the pi aromatic system formation. So, that is the reason the lone pair is not freely available on the nitrogen. So, this is going to be less basic. Whereas, in the case of aliphatic system here, there is no resonance or there is no delocalization due to which the presence of uh, lone pair is always there on the nitrogen. So, this is more basic. The same argument applies for pyridine and piperidine. So, here again, although we can say these two electrons, these pi electrons are actually perpendicular to the pi system of this aromatic ring. So, that is the reason pyridine is little bit more basic than pyrrole, but less basic than piperidine because piperidine is having a pKa of 11. That means, it is a much much a stronger base because there is no delocalization or resonance that is present in this compound. So, we can say the observed basicity of the nitrogen heterocycle can be explained based on hybridization, delocalization and the aromatic nature. And uh, if we look at uh, two different compounds here, these two amines are having very similar basic strength, but the cyclic one is a stronger nucleophile compared to the open chain one. So, this is nothing but here if you look at uh, the number of carbon, we have 3 carbon this side, we have 2 carbon this side. So, this is propyl eth uh, ethyl propyl uh, amine. So, that is the compound uh, this one which is uh, strong strongly basic like uh, piperidine, but this is a much less nucleophilic in nature whereas, piperidine is also a strong nucleophile. And when we look at the bond length uh, because carbon carbon bonds are actually uniform. So, if you look at the benzene all the carbon carbon bond lengths are 1.4 angstrom. Whereas, when we look at the pyridine, there is a two different types of uh, bond length. One is between carbon, here we have a carbon, here we have carbon, carbon, all these five are carbon. So, this carbon carbon bond length is around 1.39 angstrom, whereas the carbon nitrogen bond length is 1.37 angstrom only. So, there is a difference that is a non-uniform bond length in the case of pyridine and benzene. And when we look at uh, cyclopentadiene, we have a double bond whose uh, bond length is 1.34 angstrom and uh, there is a single bond whose bond uh, length is 1.469 angstrom. Whereas, furan when we look at, uh, we have three different uh, bond length, one is the carbon carbon single bond, we also have a carbon carbon double bond and we have a carbon oxygen single bond. So, these all the three are having different bond length. This is due to the heteroatoms present, the same is applicable for pyrrole also. And as we have seen, we are introducing a heteroatom into the alicyclic system. Say for example, if we simply take uh, benzene, all the carbon all are carbon atoms. So, when we have all carbon atoms, there is no electronegativity difference between any two carbon atoms. So, the dipole moment of benzene is 0. Whereas, when we look at uh, heterocycles, we have a carbon atom here, we have a carbon atom here, we also have a nitrogen atom. So, that means, there is a electronegativity difference between carbon and nitrogen. This leads to a permanent uh, dipole present in the compound which leads to a dipole moment of 1.17 d by unit for piperidine. And when we look at the pyridine, this is even much higher. We have a 2.2 d by unit for the dipole moment of pyridine. So, 
what is the reason behind that is we actually have a electronegativity difference between carbon and the heteroatom. So, that is responsible for the dipole moment for these kind of compounds. And of course, uh, hybridization and delocalization also play a vital role in the dipole moment. For example, we do not have a delocalization on piperidine. So, this is having a lower dipole moment compared to pyridine which is having a pi electron or the pi aromatic system. And uh, why this happens is whenever we have a delocalization that actually puts a negative charge on the nitrogen. So, when we look at uh, the resonance structures of this nitrogen which we will be looking at uh, later on, we will see that there is a negative charge on this particular nitrogen. So, whenever there is a negative charge on this nitrogen, so that actually is leading to a much higher charge polarization. So, that charge polarization is responsible for the higher dipole moment observed for pyridine. So, this is how we can actually compare how the presence of heteroatom increases the dipole of heterocyclic compound and uh, the delocalization actually reduces the lone pair availability on nitrogen. So, that actually is responsible for the different basicity that we have seen earlier. Whenever there is a delocalization that reduces the basicity, when there is no delocalization that increases the basicity. So, when we look at uh, nitrogen heteroatoms, they may have either positive charge, negative charge or neutral. So, here is a pyridine as an example. In the case of pyridine, this particular resonance structure has a neutral charge on nitrogen, but we can also write other resonance structures in which nitrogen is having a negative charge. So, this is what we have seen earlier and this negative charge actually creates a charge separation. So, we have a positive charge here, we have a negative charge here. So, there is a complete charge separation here. This leads to increased dipole moment of pyridine unit and that is the reason this is having a dipole of 2.22 which is much higher than benzene and also higher than the piperidine. So, we can say the nitrogen can have a negative charge on its resonance structures. Of course, nitrogen can also have a positive charge. In the case of pyrrole, if you look at this lone pair is actually involved in the pi ring formation that is a pi six membered aromatic uh, nature. So, that is the reason here when the nitrogen loses the lone pair, this becomes a positive charge. So, we also can have a heterocycle with nitrogen having a positive charge. So, three type of uh, systems are possible. One in which nitrogen is having a neutral charge. So, no charge on nitrogen. So, this is one type. Nitrogen can have a negative charge as in the case of pyridine. Nitrogen can also have a positive charge as in the case of pyrrole. So, these are all the various ways by which nitrogen can exist in the heterocyclic system. But when we talk about oxygen and sulfur atoms, they either have a neutral charge that means no charge or they can have a positive charge only. There is no negative charge on oxygen or sulfur heterocycle. So, here we, we take uh, thiophene as an example. So, here the thiophene is having a positive charge, the sulfur is having a positive charge in two resonance structures and here the pyrrhelium ion is having a positive charge on oxygen. So, that means oxygen may have a neutral or a positive charge on the heterocyclic systems. And why do we need to know all these things? Because the reactivity of the heterocyclic systems are decided by these kind of various resonance structures and the charge distribution. And if you look at the heterocyclic compounds, uh, many of the heterocyclic compounds which are carboxylic acids or amides, these are solids at room temperature. That means, they have a good or high melting point. Niacin is having a melting point of 237 nicotinamide is having a melting point of 128. So, these compounds are not liquids, these are actually solids. And if you compare the melting point of various uh, similar compounds, say for example, we have a nitrogen heterocycle here, another nitrogen heterocycle, 
we have a sulfur and the oxygen. So, we have three different heteroatoms, heterocycles are there and if you look at the melting point of the carboxylic acid, the pyrrole uh, 2 carboxylic acid is having a melting point of 204 whereas, sulfur is having 125 and the oxygen is having close enough like uh, sulfur so that is 128. So, in other words what we can say is the nitrogen can also have additional hydrogen bonding due to which the nitrogen heterocycles are having higher melting point and boiling points whereas, sulfur and oxygen may not have that option. So, that is the reason they are having little bit a lower uh, melting point in the case of carboxylic acid also. So, how we can actually form a pyridine? A simple comparison is uh, we can actually replace one of the CH group in benzene that means one of the CH group in benzene is replaced by the nitrogen atom. So, when we do this kind of uh, change that we are actually introducing a nitrogen is basically electron withdrawing in nature. So, we are introducing a electron withdrawing heteroatom into the ring. So, what is the effect of introducing a electron withdrawing group into the ring? So, obviously, we will uh, know that whenever we introduce a electron withdrawing group, the nature or the reactivity of the system is going to be affected. We really do not know in which direction it will go and when we look at the reactivity of pyridine compounds, we will actually look at this particular ring can actually undergo two types of reactions. One is electrophilic aromatic substitution as usual like the benzene ring they undergo and they also undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions which are not seen in the case of benzene rings. So, introduction of a heteroatom especially the nitrogen changes the reactivity of this particular system. So, let us look at some of the changes what are uh, happening when we replace one carbon atom with a nitrogen that is one CH group is replaced by a nitrogen atom. Uh, benzene is a hexagonal symmetric compound because we have seen all the bond lengths are uniform in the case of benzene. So, it is having a hexagonal symmetry, but in the case of pyridine the C n bond length is actually uh, different compared to the C c bond length. So, that means we have no longer the hexagonal symmetry that is present in benzene. And of course, we also this is the hexagonal loss of symmetry is due to the change in the bond length. Of course, the change in bond length also arises because of a electronegativity difference between carbon and nitrogen. And because of the presence of a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, the pyridine is basic in nature. And of course, this also increases the dipole moment of pyridine. So, these are all the changes that happens when we replace one carbon atom from the benzene with one nitrogen atom. So, these are all the reasons why the heterocyclic compounds are more reactive than the corresponding aliphatic or aromatic compounds. When we look at the six membered heterocyclic ring, we are introducing a heteroatom which is electron withdrawing in nature. So, since this is electron withdrawing in nature, they actually pull the electrons from the pi ring systems towards itself making that system pi deficient. So, that means the aromatic system becomes pi deficient because of the introduction of the heteroatoms and uh, this makes that ring pi electron deficient. So, that means the reactivity are going to be extremely different compared to aromatic systems. That means, benzene does not undergo reaction by nucleophilic substitution whereas, pyridine can undergo because the ring now becomes less electron rich compared to benzene. And there are other cases uh, when we compare benzene with the pyrrole. In the case of benzene and the pyrrole, there are two carbon atoms uh, that are being replaced by one hetero atom. So, this also leads to a change in uh, various uh, 
physical and chemical properties this here we have shown nitrogen as an example instead of nitrogen we can also have oxygen or we can also have sulfur and uh, what we are doing is basically in this particular case even though this is a electron withdrawing uh, atom we are introducing we are actually introducing or giving electron towards the ring so that is the reason in this particular case what happens is we are introducing some electron density from the hetero atom to the ring so that's the reason this ring becomes pi excessive in nature compared to benzene so the difference between the six membered ring and the five membered ring is in the case of six membered ring the electrons are being pulled by the hetero atom so they become pi deficient whereas in the case of a five membered ring they actually give the electron towards the ring so they make the ring pi excessive so that is the difference between five membered and the six membered reactivity so the introduction of a hetero atom changes the reactivity of the benzene ring in the summary let us recap what we have studied so far we have studied about the various classification of heterocycle that means based on the nature based on aromatic or aliphatic system based on the ring fusion based on the size of the ring based on the number of hetero atoms how heterocycles can be classified we have seen we have also did the comparison between carbocyclic and heterocyclic systems so what are the advan what are the various characteristics of carbocyclic systems and what are the different characteristics of uh, heterocyclic systems what are the applications of heterocyclic compounds all those things we have studied we also have uh, done an elaborated study on characteristics of various heterocyclic compounds especially how to compare the physical properties of various heterocyclic compounds with the carbocyclic one like uh, melting point boiling point and dipole moment comparison we have done we have also studied about the effect of bond length hybridization resonance on the structure and the properties of various heterocyclic compound we have seen we have taken the five membered and the six membered ring compounds as our examples and we also have studied about the pi excessive and the pi deficient nature of the heterocycle the five membered rings are called as pi excessive and the six membered heterocycles are called as pi deficient all those things we have seen with that we conclude this session Thank you.